Hello, it's John from Hope Junction. Welcome to the latest video. In this video, we'll be talking about the London Festival of Railway Modelling at Alexander Palace, the show attended at the weekend, and also the latest update to Hope Junction and the portable layout. Well, first of all, I'd like to apologise for being so long since I've done the last video. It seems months ago, doesn't it, in the summer? So, um, but we're into a new year, it's spring, and uh, it was nice at the weekend to go down to London do the London Festival Row and Modelling at Alexander Palace. Excuse me. It's been nearly three, well, it has been three years since the last attendance show. We had in mind to go in 2020, but due to that dreaded coronavirus, it got pulled literally two weeks before we went. So it's been a while since we last attended that show. Also, we went to um, Milton Keynes, the Great Hornby Electric Train Show, and we'll be going again, again this October. So was it great to be back? It was, it was good to be back. Um, at a rate out of 10, I'll probably give it an eight. And the reason I'll say eight is due to, I think there wasn't so much layouts as there usually is, and also not so much trade stands as there normally is. Now, I don't know if that's due to um, the management of the venue, um, restriction for space reasons, there's more space for social distancing, or um, ones who do display layouts or have trade stands, if they didn't feel comfortable due to the increase in COVID, or don't think there's gonna be the footfall to warrant going to the show. So, but who knows, you know, it's just one of them things. But the show was was great. It was good to be back. It was nice to see the layouts. They had Elm Park, Old Elm Park, O'Gage, you had Copenhagen Fields, um, Grindley, is it Ryan? And there's Grindley Brook. Let's have a look. Let's get these names right. Get to my thing. The old Elm Park O gauge. That's an engine shed scene. But Grindley Brook. That's an O gauge one. That's another nice layout. At Copenhagen Fields, what's the N gauge layout? And um, Red Bridge Wharf was another favourite of mine. Oakwell Village, another um, double O gauge. And another one I enjoyed, as another O gauge, funny enough, was um, Scout Green Crossing. But there was other lovely um, layouts to look at as well. So, tray stands, yes, it wasn't so much as I thought it would be. Um, ones you usually expect to see there weren't there. Um, and ones were there, it seemed to scale down. I think like TMC, I know it's the last two shows we've been to, they haven't had so much stock. Before you used to go and be like a kid in the sweet shop going through the shelves and picking stuff out, looking at coach and stock, but there wasn't much there at all. But it ain't gonna be a problem because we'll be visiting their shop in a couple of weeks when I'm on holiday up in Yorkshire. So as you do when you go to a show, well I do anyway, you have a little list and your shopping list of things to purchase. I did have a list. One of them was on the list and the others are not, but I just bought them because they were bargain prices. First of all, we'll start with the smallest one. We went to the West Hill Wagons um, Works um, stand, and we've seen these advertised in Hornby magazine. These are the Hunt couplings, magnetic couplings, and these are Buck 01s, Mark 1, Mark 2, Pullman stepped colours couplings. So I bought these for my boat train, um, my Pullman coaches. These are a bit more money because they're a bit more detailed and don't look so... Um, what's the word, um, ghastly to the eye. Um, these look more neat and uh, and these are NEM fitting ones, so they'll fit nicely. They're more expensive, but I'd rather pay a bit more and have something that looks more statically pleasing to the eye. So I've got them. Um, finally, I've got my final totem sign done. Tiffy Valley, that's the branch line what's directly above my head. Just go on the back wall above the station, and it's the same colour as the station colour with the signal box and the rails. So it's going to fit in nicely with that. So we've got that finally done. We bought some coaching stock. First of all, we got this first class restaurant car, a, Mun a Munsell coach, and that's down from £47 to £43. So I've got a £4 saving there. So it looked good on my unrebuilt um, spam cam. 
the Battle of Britain class or even the rebuilt one, I can run it on. Uh, another first class Munsell coach, 25 quid, I thought it was a good price. Um, also, the box is a bit, as I said, I don't know if it's water damaged, it's, it's been beaten about a bit, but um, you're not going to see the that'd be out of its box anyway, so I thought it's a good price, 25 quid. And for 22, I've got another Munsell coach at first class, Crimson and Cream. I thought this would look good on my S15. And when I build up a rake of coaches for that, we can mix and match these ones um, for the um, rebuilt spam cam. Another seven set I got. This time it is a BR pull push set coach stock. Um, this was £65. I think it was a, a bargain because you think normal coaches, I know these were cheap, but usually retail between £36 to £45. So if you say £40, coach that's 80 pounds so get this for 65 quid you know um i think it's like 15 pound saving so um and that would look good on the layout on pirate junction or my portable one um because i can run it off my little 3mt tank um i would like to, i would like to get a, an m7 tank or an uh, adams tank as well um it's demonstrating the box that will run like got a little m7 tank there actually funny enough and you can use it, like I said, push pull set. So it um, looks quite smart. So I'm um, pleased to get that. And the biggest purchase of the day, um, well, usually I, I, you, you look for a logo you have in mind. I did have in mind to get a BR2M2, a BR standard 2MT tender engine. Um, Hornby have bringing out in a, that's in a new catalogue. Obviously, it's not out yet because I had a look at the show, couldn't see it anyway. So, probably midsummer or end of the year, they'll be hitting the shelves. But you still peruse the stands, don't you? Looking for a bargain like I have in the past and picked up a bargain. And I did pick up a bargain this time. Um, I have been looking at getting another Southern engine again. Um, I'm usually um, LMS man, I do love my LMS locos, as Malcolm well knows. And um, but I have been drawn to the old Southern Locos at the moment, and especially the old Spam cans, unrebuilt ones, or the rebuilt ones. And um, I always look at them um, on the stores, them Locos, and I found one, a Merchant Navy. This is the Holland's America line um, Loco, in early BR. And um, usually these were retailing at the show between 100 and, I think they were 167, the cheapest one I saw. To about 195 pound i went on to kerno model railway store just having a look for actually coaching stock actually and because i just looked at the locos and I was, they had three of these um that the this one and a couple of other different ones and they were 138.99 so i didn't but hesitate i think i'll have a look around other stands to see if it's any cheaper i i purchased this one for that price and i think it's a bargain you know, I'd probably save myself at least £30, you know, maybe even £40. So uh, I'm really pleased with this loco. So this will look good on the boat train on my Pullman coaches, um, especially with the, the logo there on the boiler. I'll just get out of the box. See, have a look at it. Well, I won't get it complete at the box, but we can I'll take out the sleeve. There we are, there she is. Nice bit of detail on the cab there. Lovely lines on the, on the bodywork. The badge there on the boiler. So it's gonna look a real treat on the layout, pulling the, the Pullman coaches. This will get chipped eventually, and that will be a, another project for roads and rails. And uh, weathering, I haven't decided yet. Um, I might get it weathered. Or I might just leave it as it is because I will be buying another Merch Navy. I want the steam blue one. So I have two sets of Merch Navy on the layout and what will be a weathered one. So I might keep that one as pristine. So that's what I bought at the show. So I, was, I came away quite pleased myself with what I bought and bargains I picked up. So that's enough talking about 
of the show. Now we're going to move on to High Oak Junction and obviously the portable layout to see what progress has been made on them two layouts. So let, let's take a look. Well, welcome to High Oak Junction. No, you're not used to seeing it like this, are you? Total uh, devastation. The track has been now lifted from here. This was the Art Deco station we used to have up there. We used to have the coal stage running there and a good shed down there. All the track work is gone. Um, all the station builders' platforms are ripped up. And as you can see here, all the boards have gone. Now this was where the island platform used to be. That was over there, the, the fiddle yard. All the tracks gone from there. You can see we've purchased new boards or plywood and um, 12 mil ply so um we've been the mdf boards are gone they're chucked away you can see that's the old my original bus wire what was this gonna be a temporary thing but it's, in the end it's been there 15 uh, 13 years that's what i used for them um what it took when they removed the storage heats in our bungalow so i used reused it and just thought there's a temporary fix and then i just yeah, get a time me over for a little while done the bus wire but like i said it's been there 13 14 years but it's done well so the there'll be a new bus wire these frames will be redone um as my granddad would say a blind man would be pleased to see it <laughs> my carpentry skills but uh, this will be redone new supports reframes redone as you can see it's not it's in square so we'll get these redone and make it nice and sturdy again so what we've got planned well here we've got total changes here because just there where my fingers with them cows on there there's gonna be a point coming off there and then it'll be a branch line running down here an incline down here to the new station over there well we'll come to that in a minute here the, the line used to come down here in this way originally before but now these twin tracks will be going through this way, running that way, and there'll be a spur there. And this spur will come here, will be for the um, harbour scene for my boat train. So originally this was the island platform. The track used to be here, go down there for the um, um, colliery that is going to be done away with. So and this be the scene will be curved around here. I'll be to be taken off and be rock mold in there to look like cliffs so it'll look like the sea here and the sea will come around here so the station will be come around here for the boat train there'll be a little turntable around here somewhere for the engine to turn around and back up on the other side of the train now probably two twin tracks twin tracks over there for the main line here i might have a diesel depot with the works cleaning station all that sort of stuff and feeling point here uh, we haven't decided on that and then obviously the main line will come along here the station we can see the plan there's a rough plan what it's going to be like it's going to be a, a terminus station in time not a through well it's going to be double actually tell the lights it's going to be a terminus and a through station so you've got the, the bays there so you've got, you've got the fire end bay that'd be for like your branch line train and there'll be another one here for like the main station and then obviously on the curve here be another platform here will be for the through trains so you've got all them different options. The branch line, it could be just an individual branch line that'll run along here where that signal box is to where that branch line is. So that'd be a direct line or that come off the branch line onto the main line. So you've got two options. So it just can just run like an end to end up to the branch line, round to the main station, or you can come onto the main line like for goods can come on there or whatever. That's going to be redeveloped. The engine shed's not going to be there anymore. The turntable's getting lifted out there. There's going to be a marshalling yard for wagons, rolling stock, and etc. Here, we might have the engine shed here now. And it might reposition here, and the goods shed be reworked. But this part of the layout from here onwards will stay the same. No alterations. So basically, from this bend, will be changed. All this will be new boards here as well. On the frames redone up here too. The reason is because we didn't go into the new bit, the extension like we had in mind, because there's just not enough space to do it and it's just not feasible. So we have to rework our plans and this is what we would be doing now. So the 
the harbour seemed to be here. The stations changed, the branch line running along the back. So you got a bit more um, with new track work and different options. So in the branch lines, so they can go around this, that loop here. It can come off there, come down onto the main line or into the station, or to come down this way on that um, incline there. So that's how it is at the moment. Sorry for the mess up here. It does look quite disheartening, to be honest, you know, seeing how it is. Cause that's why I'm so glad we've done this bit now before we've done any major scenery work. And that would have been really disheartening. But there wasn't really much done here, to be honest. So that's not too bad. But uh, that is how it is at the moment at Height Junction. Obviously, currently no trains running because the bus wire has been cut. Um, so um, that's going to be a bit quiet up here for a little while. It's a shame because I like to run trains and have a little buck about up here. But hopefully we can crack on, me and Malk, get these frames done board it and get the bus wire through and then once we've got the, the board down we can start pinning track down or planning it we're getting we want to pin it down lightly just to see if it works and run it and then if we're all happy with the track work the trains run on it then we'll fully pin it down and then we'll start weathering it and ballasting but that's gonna be really to the end till we're really happy with the track work and if it works and it's you know as ideal for the situation so that's it at Hike junction um what we're going to do now we'll have a look at the portable layout and see the progress being made on that and i can say there's been more progress made on that than up here so uh, let's take a look so here we are this is the portable layout i haven't got a name for this yet so we'll just call it the portable layout for now so as you can see now i've got legs on here in the frames, um, they've got a hinged leg, so it means they can tuck up under the boards. This is on a, a wing nut here, so you can undo that and drop this down. And so it means you can tuck the legs up when you're transporting it. But obviously I won't be able to do that for a while because I can't get it in my car for a start and my van isn't big enough. So, um, But the, for now that can go outside in the summer months and I can run trains in the garden when it's too hot to go up in the loft. Okay, so what we've done so far, We've, as you can see, I've, I've weathered the track. We've got the old drop wires all on there and the frog wire, because obviously, obviously I've got um, electro frog points. It's co 75 track I've used this time. And um, what I'll be using as well for the first time as well is these um, cobalt slow motion points. And they're the digital IP ones. So um, they're not cheap. I've got a pack of six, so it's cheaper to buy that way. And these are slow motion, like I said. So it means the further point of this would be a slow click over compared to a solenoid point because you hear the buzz and that will throw it over quite with a jolt. This will be a slow motion one. So make it trying to make it more lifelike. And that's why I'm spending a bit more money and time on this layout because obviously if I want to show it, if I feel comfortable in showing it to ones, to the public, so I want it to look the best it can, uh, realistic. Here on this bit of cork, here's going to be the, the signal box. This is a platform what I'm building so far. It's just in situ, it's not fixed down yet. Now, these are Will's kits, plastic card sheets. I've got one to hand somewhere. Where is it? Um, there we are. There's one looking about. So, this is how it looks like it comes out of the packet. Um, is the Will's. And uh, it's a Victoria paving. Now, what I've done. I've applied, sorry about that, that's the old K1 getting off steam. Three different paints on here. I put a base paint down, a, a dark grey, what was, I think I used, um, hmm, ah, oh, God, can't think it isn't called now. Um, nope, I ain't got it to hand either, so sorry about that, I can't tell what it is. Anyway, so I've got three um, different paints on here. And then what I've done with a bit of thinners, I just wiped it. And then you can see, it gives us this blotchy effect here, here. And there, so it just looks like how paving would look. A bit dirty, but it's cleaned. So um, that's what I've done so far. And on the, you can see on the, on the edge of the platform, the brick, I've got the brickwork. Now this is embossed sheeting. 
and here it is here. If I turn it to light, you can see it has embossed. And this is from Nock. This is um, good sheet stuff. You just, and you just, just, just put um, adhesive on the back and glue it um, onto the plastic Pico platform etching. You know, what I've got there. And then obviously for the insert of the platforms, I'm going to have this. It's just packaging I got from a parcel. Um, and I thought this is ideal. It's just near enough, as you can see, the height. So when you put on here, it's just nearly there. So what I'm going to do, I just have to see if I can just take that damage it, probably do it with a sharp knife, scalpel, and just take this base layer off, and then that'll be perfect, the right height for the platform. And uh, and that'd be, obviously it's strong, but it'd be lightweight when I'm transporting this layer around, so I want it easy and light to carry. So that's what I've done so far. Um, obviously here we've got a little head shunt, Here's another head shunt here. This would be the good uh, engine shed, so not good shed, an inspection pit. We've got the good shed down this end. We've changed it from the last one because that was going to be this side, but I thought, well, this is going to be the, the back scene here. So obviously you want people to see activities, uh, scenes created. So I thought best to have it on that side and create a busy scene of, of lorries or vans being loaded up from the wagons from a freight train. I've got another little hedge hunt there. Here's going to be the cattle dock area. We've moved up to this side now. And here, as always, the coal staves will be here. I have a little coal merchant, little hut building there. And the road will go off. And it'll be on the next board, as you can see, it's here. We've drawn on this one, on this edge here. So I'm going to have two six foot sections. So it's 12 foot, and then there'll be a four foot one. Um, oh, here it is. So I knew I had it is here. This is going to be for the filter yard, this board here. So um, all the storage of the trains in there. I'm going to have about five tracks in there. So I've got one for DMU, one for a passenger suburban, one for freight, and uh, what I was going to do, a milk train as well. So, uh, and a diesel passenger. So, um, so it's worse well, I want five to six roads on here. So I've got the options. And they'll be with solenoid points on that one. I'm not going to bother with slow motion points on that one. So that's what we've got so far on this layout. I've, for the power bus, I've got these dowels. Um, once again, these from DC con Concepts. So you, what you do, you put them on the end of the board. As you can see, I've got dowels at the moment. But this is just a, a, a alignment dowel. So... Um, when I hook up the layer, I've got here, so you can see it there on this one here. So it locks into place like that, and then I line the next board up. And then what I'll do, these ones here will be positioned one there, one there, and then the power bus cable will be connected to that so it can create another feed to the next board. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to demonstrate my, well, I said, nearly said my K1 then, it's not my K1, it's Malcolm's K1, so we'll give it a run the track, I have cleaned it, see if it works, here we go. Sound decoders from Dizzy Trains. So far, so, oh, come on. So the dirty track. Oh. I did clean it, but was it not well enough?